Hello, my name is Chris Wraith. I'm the Technical Officer for the International Powered Access Federation and today I'm going to talk to you about mobile elevated work platforms and the need for familiarisation before use. What I'm going to cover in my talk today is what is a familiarisation, why and when it is required, what it should include and who can deliver it. So what is a familiarisation? A familiarisation is a process by which an operator becomes familiar with a specific machine and in particular familiarises themselves with the manufacturer's instructions, the machine specific features, the control functions, the safety devices and the emergency lowering systems before they attempt to use the particular machine. It is also known as a handover. So why is a familiarisation required? I'm sure you would agree with me that to operate a machine that you, you are unfamiliar with the controls, there is a greater risk of accident if you move the lever the wrong direction or the machine moves unexpectedly. So it is essential that an operator is familiar with the MUPE they are about to operate. There are a large number of manufacturers of MUPEs worldwide nowadays and each manufacturer has an individual design, individual control layouts and individual features. There are machines out there which give a working height from more than 2 metres right up to over 100 metres. And the advances in technology means the MUPEs are becoming more and more computerised. There is also a legal requirement for an employer to ensure any operator receives adequate training and familiarisation before they use a piece of work equipment. So, Do you need a familiarisation if you have an operator's licence? Well, familiarisation is not training, but it follows on from basic training. Basic training covers generic machine type categories, such as scissor lifts or such as booms, but it does not cover specific machines within those categories. So if you are asked to operate a machine which differs significantly from those that you were trained on, such as in weight, height, width, length, complexity, you will need a, need a familiarisation to cover the differences. And what should that familiarisation consist of? Well, first and foremost, you need to be aware of the manufacturer's instructions, where the operator's manual is and what is included in the operator's manual. Some operator's manuals are kept in the control box uh, in the basket. Others are kept in the, near the ground controls, so it is, it is essential you locate where the manufacturer's operator's manual is kept and what is contained in it. You should also familiarise, be familiarised with the instructions that are written on notices all over the machine, including the warning decals, the warning notices, which give you specific information about the safe working limits of the machine, such as the wind speed and the maximum working load and the maximum number of people. There are lots of other decals as well which need to be familiar, you need to be familiar with. Apart from the manufacturer's instructions, you need to be familiarised with the specific machine features. The graphic showing shows an articulated boom, but there is also telescopic booms coming in the same training category. So you have to be aware of the structural design of the specific machine. Be aware of the features such as the rotating basket or in a fly jib, as it's going to show in a second. You need to be aware of all the functions of the specific machine to be able to ensure you use it safely and efficiently and to comply it to the workplace safely and efficiently without incident. So apart from being familiar with the specific uh, structural design of the machine, there are lots of other specific features that you need to be aware of. Is the machine uh, a diesel powered, electric powered, uh, powered by gas? Is it a two-wheel drive? Is it a four-wheel drive? Is it a rough terrain machine? Or is it designed solely to work on a slab, a concrete slab? Does it have stabilizing devices such as outriggers? Is it self-leveling? Does it have any leveling devices on it? Does it have oscillating axles? Does it have an extending deck? You need to be aware of these features on the specific machines to be able to operate them safely and efficiently. Furthermore, the familiarisation should include 
demonstration and familiarization with all the control functions. If you see the two examples shown, are two examples of different control boxes from manufacturers. But they operate very similar machines. But the layout of the controls and the different types of levers are very different considerably. And it is essential you are familiar with what control moves what lever and especially where the emergency stop is. And as you can see in the pictures there, it is in different locations. So you need to be fully familiar with the upper controls, but also familiar with the lower controls. It may be that someone has to effect a rescue and operate the controls to get someone down. If you are not familiar with the lower controls, that rescue may not be, not be possible. So make sure you are familiar with all the controls, not just where they are, but how they function. And take time to use them and practice using them so you know how they react. Also in a familiarization, you should talk about that you should be aware of the safety features and devices on the machines. When an alarm is going off on a machine, is it an audible alarm telling you the machine is lowering or is it an alarm telling you there's something wrong with the machine and you should stop? That is something you need to be aware of along with all the other safety features and devices which may or may not be on your particular machine. There are a list of them on the screen, um, but there are many more as well. Be aware of the safety features and the safety devices and know how they work and know how, when to stop using the machine. And be aware of the emergency lowering functions, not only where it is, but how it works where the emergency lowering device is in the platform, where the lowering emergency lowering device is on the ground as well. It may not be located in the same place on all machines. Some machines you have to push a button, some machines you pull a lever, uh, and not all machines have the uh, it clearly marked in writing. There is a tendency now with the international use of machines to go away from written signage to pictorial signs. Be familiar with the sign that depicts the emergency lowering function of your MUPE and make sure you know where it is and how it works. Make sure you can demonstrate that function to someone else because should you, should you ever be in the situation which is being shown on the graphics, somebody on the ground will need to be able to lower that machine very quickly and efficiently to be able to effect an efficient rescue. Make sure you know all the emergency functions, how they work, and you can demonstrate them to somebody else. So who can deliver a familiarization? Familiarization should be delivered by a competent operator who has been nominated by their employer. Normally, that you will find this is a, a, a demonstrator from a higher company, or probably a manufacturer. But if you wish to nominate your own people to do familiarizations, it is recommended they go on an IPAF demonstrator course. The course is a full day's course and it explains what it should be included in a demonstration, how the message can be got across and it has a theory and a practical session. And once successfully completed you get the demonstrator card uh, to go along with your operator card. There is a belief that people can do self-familiarization. Yes, the operator's manual does include all the information that is needed to familiarize yourself with a machine. But unless you are a very competent operator and the machine is only slightly different from the one you were trained on, it is recommended you, you take advantage of a proper demonstration by a nominated competent operator. And should you keep a record of that familiarization? Well, yes, certainly you should keep a record. Sometimes when your familiarization is done, you receive a familiarization certificate. But better still, every time you have a familiarization, record it in the logbook that you receive when you do your operator's course. Record the day the familiarization was done, what type of machine you were familiarized on, where you were familiarized, and who did the familiarization and get the person doing the familiarization to sign the book to say they have familiarized you. That way, over a period of time, you will keep a record of all the machines you have been familiarized on, and it will help demonstrate your, comp your, help demonstrate your competence uh, when using these machines. 
So what are the consequences of not being familiarised? Well, best case scenario is you won't use the machine very well, you won't use it very efficiently, and the work at height will take longer. But perhaps you may not then be as sure of how the machine works, and you may report it down as a broken down. When it isn't broken down, it is just you who doesn't know what's wrong with the machine because one of the safety devices or safety functions has operated. Worse still, not having a familiarisation before operating a machine leads to an increased risk of accident, damage to the machine, and worse still, damage to yourself and other people. And should an accident happen, legal action may be taken against you or your employer. So it is essential that a familiarisation is carried out before you operate a machine. So to summarise, familiarisation is a legal requirement. To, there is a legal requirement to ensure all operators using work equipment are adequately trained and familiarised. And familiarisation is required when the machine differs significantly from the one you were trained on. Machine-specific familiarisation is not training but follows on from basic training and it should cover the manufacturer's instructions and warnings, the features of the specific model, the control functions, safety devices and the emergency lowering procedure. This information, more information about familiarisation can be found on the IPATH website and the IPATH technical guidance note shown on, this, on the screen. And if you are in doubt about using a MUPE and you are not familiar with all the controls, don't use it, ask for a familiarisation. Your safety depends on being familiar with the controls and how to use the machine. And familiarisation doesn't take just five minutes. Familiarisation may take half an hour or longer. The time it takes you to become comfortable with using all the functions and knowing what features and, and devices the machine has. Take time to get to know the machine before you use it. Familiarise yourself with the machine. So for more information about familiarisation or other IPATH matters, please visit our website at ipath.org or contact uh, IPATH at the address shown on the screen. Thank you very much for listening. Bye.